Let's get right into it. Number 7. Maggots eating your flesh on purpose. Picture this. You're chained up in a dark medieval dungeon, and some guard dumps a bucket of squirming maggots onto your open wounds. The little white worms start crawling all over you, burrowing into your flesh. They'd leave prisoners rotting with untreated wounds, letting nature's tiny monsters feast on their bodies. But here's where it gets wild. Some battlefield doctors started noticing something that made no sense. Soldiers who came back from war with maggot-infested wounds were actually healing better than the ones without them. The guys with clean wounds were dying from infection. Turns out these disgusting little creatures are the pickiest eaters on the planet. They only eat dead, rotting tissue. They won't touch the healthy stuff. It's like having an army of microscopic surgeons working 24-7, cleaning out all the nasty bits while leaving the good parts alone. Fast forward to today, and doctors are literally breeding maggots in sterile labs. These aren't your garbage can variety maggots. These are medical-grade, FDA-approved maggots. Hospitals actually order them like medicine. The maggots even produce their own antibiotics while they're munching away. They're eating the infection and disinfecting the wound at the same time. It's like hiring a cleaning crew that brings their own supplies. The best part is modern doctors put the maggots in these little mesh bags like tiny tea bags full of worms. They place them on your wound, and the maggots do their thing through the mesh. No more worrying about them crawling up your leg or into places they shouldn't be. Number 6. The Rack That Fixed Your Back The rack was medieval Europe's favorite way to make someone spill their secrets. They'd strap you down on this wooden frame, tie ropes to your wrists and ankles, then slowly crank the wheel. Your body would stretch like taffy until your joints started popping out of their sockets. First your shoulders, then your hips. The sound of ligaments snapping was like bubble wrap from hell. Most people would confess to anything, even crimes they didn't commit, just to make it stop. But this torture device that ripped people apart actually inspired one of today's most popular back pain treatments. Modern spinal decompression therapy uses the exact same idea as the rack. They strap you to a table and gently pull your spine apart. Only instead of trying to make you confess to witchcraft, they're trying to fix your herniated disc. The modern version has computers monitoring every millimeter of movement. Sensors track your muscle tension. If your body starts fighting back, the machine automatically eases off. It's like the difference between a sledgehammer and a surgeon's scalpel. Same basic tool, totally different application. The stretching creates negative pressure inside your spine, like a vacuum. This sucks bulging disc material back where it belongs. Imagine squeezing a jelly donut until the filling squirts out, then somehow sucking it all back inside. That's what's happening to your discs. The same force that once tore nights apart is now putting office workers back together. Number 5. The Drill That Saves Lives You're in ancient Peru with the worst headache of your life. The local healer has a solution that'll make your blood run cold. They're going to drill a hole in your skull while you're awake. They believed evil spirits were trapped in your head, causing all your problems. The only way out is to give them an exit hole. Scientists have found thousands of ancient skulls with perfect circular holes drilled into them. Most of these people survived. We know because the bone around the holes shows healing. These weren't botched surgeries. These people lived for years after having their skulls opened like a can of beans. Turns out these ancient brain surgeons accidentally discovered something brilliant. When you get smacked in the head really hard, your brain swells up like a sponge soaking up water. But your skull is a solid box that doesn't stretch. The pressure builds and builds until it crushes your brain from the inside. By drilling holes, they were releasing that pressure and saving lives. Today's neurosurgeons do the exact same thing. They call it a craniotomy. Instead of sharp rocks, they use diamond-tipped drills and precision saws. But the basic idea hasn't changed in 5,000 years. Create a hole, release the pressure, save the patient. Modern surgeons can even remove a whole section of skull and store it in the patient's belly to keep it alive. Then weeks later, they put it back like a puzzle piece. Ancient Peruvians had a different approach. They'd take that skull piece and turn it into jewelry. Number 4. Ice Water Torture Becomes Therapy The ducking stool was medieval Europe's answer to dealing with women who talked too much. They'd strap you to a chair attached to a long wooden beam then repeatedly dunk you into the freezing river while the whole town watched and placed bets on how long you'd last. Each dunk lasted longer than the last, first just a quick dip to shock you, then holding you under until your lungs burned for air. The crowd would cheer as you came up gasping and shivering. The water was so cold it felt like thousands of needles stabbing your skin all at once. Your body would go into shock, your heart racing like it was trying to escape your chest. Now that same torture is a luxury treatment that costs hundreds of dollars. Professional athletes line up to voluntarily jump into ice baths, 
The same freezing shock that was designed to break your spirit is now used to make you stronger. LeBron James does it. Tom Brady swears by it. When you hit that ice water, your blood vessels slam shut like doors in a hurricane. This squeezes out all the waste products that make your muscles sore. Your body floods with adrenaline and endorphins. Natural painkillers stronger than anything you can buy at the pharmacy. Number 3. Sleep deprivation as medicine. Witch hunters in medieval times had a favorite trick. Keep the accused awake until they confessed. No sleep for days, sometimes weeks. Guards would take turns poking them with sticks, throwing cold water, making noise. After 48 hours without sleep, you start seeing shadows move. After 72 hours, those shadows have faces. By day 4, you're having full conversations with people who aren't there. You'd confess to dancing with the devil just for 5 minutes of sleep. The torture was so effective because sleep deprivation literally breaks your brain. Your thoughts get tangled like earbuds in your pocket. You can't tell what's real anymore. Medieval torturers knew that a sleep-deprived person would say anything, admit to anything, just to make it stop. But modern psychiatrists looked at this torture method and saw potential. They discovered that keeping severely depressed patients awake for one night could snap them out of it. About half feel dramatically better within 24 hours. It's like their brain gets stuck in a loop and staying awake forces it to restart. The effect is almost magical. Patients who haven't smiled in months suddenly feel joy again. People who couldn't get out of bed are suddenly full of energy. But like Cinderella's carriage, the magic wears off. Once they sleep again, the depression usually returns. So doctors created triple chronotherapy. They combined the sleep deprivation with bright light therapy and carefully controlled sleep schedules. They're using the same brain-breaking technique that made innocent people confess to witchcraft, but now they're using it to pull people out of the darkness. Number 2. Bloodletting that actually works sometimes. Medieval doctors were obsessed with draining blood like vampires with medical degrees. They had elaborate charts showing where to cut based on your zodiac sign and the phase of the moon. Got a fever? Drain a pint. Feeling sad? Better make that two pints. They'd slice open veins with special knives and let the blood flow into bowls. Some doctors even tasted it to diagnose problems, like sommeliers of human blood. The tools were terrifying. Spring-loaded lancets that shot blades into your skin. Scarificators with multiple blades that made several cuts at once. Fleams, which were basically brass knuckles with knives attached. They turned bloodletting into an art form, if your art involves making people leak. George Washington died because his doctors drained half his blood trying to cure a throat infection. They took 80 ounces in 12 hours. That's like donating blood 10 times in one day. The treatment literally killed him faster than the disease would have. But modern doctors still drain blood to treat certain conditions. They just use sterile needles instead of rusty blades. Hemochromatosis makes your body hoard iron like a doomsday prepper. All that extra iron rusts your organs from the inside. The cure is to drain blood regularly to get rid of the excess iron. Then there's polycythemia vera, where your bone marrow goes crazy making red blood cells. Your blood gets thick as syrup. Your heart struggles to pump it. You could have a stroke at any moment. The treatment is literally medieval. They drain the blood until it thins out. Number 1. The Poison That Heals Hearts Foxglove was medieval Europe's deadliest lie detector. Accused of theft? Eat these purple flowers. If you survive, you're innocent. If your heart explodes, well, clearly you were guilty. The plant contains digitalis, a poison so powerful it can stop your heart with just a few leaves. Medieval folks called it dead man's bells because the flowers look like tiny purple bells and eating them meant you'd soon be hearing actual funeral bells. Victims would first feel their heart racing like a hummingbird's wings. Then it would slow down until each beat felt like a sledgehammer in their chest. Their vision would turn green, like looking through emerald glasses. Finally, their heart would just stop, like someone hit the off switch. But in 1775, a doctor named William Withering noticed something odd. People with swollen legs who accidentally ate small amounts of foxglove got better instead of dying. Their swelling went down. Their breathing improved. Somehow, this heart-stopping poison was actually fixing hearts when used in tiny doses. Today, digitalis is one of our most important heart medications. It makes weak hearts pump stronger and irregular hearts beat steadier. The difference between poison and medicine is literally just a few milligrams. Too little, nothing happens. Too much, you're pushing up daisies. Just right, and it saves your life. Emergency rooms stock it. Cardiologists prescribe it daily. Your grandmother probably takes it for her atrial fibrillation. We turned an instrument of death into an instrument of healing. That green vision thing still happens if you take too much. It's called xanthopsia, 
and it's how doctors know to dial back the dose. Van Gogh might have had it, which could explain why some of his paintings have that weird yellow-green tint. He was probably taking foxglove for his seizures, so one of history's greatest artists might have painted masterpieces while seeing the world through medieval poison-tinted glasses. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.